So, Interstellar is a 2014 science fiction film written and directed by Christopher Nolan. It's a great film. Really good. Everyone should watch it. Uh, not going to be many spoilers, but turn off the interview and go watch it now if you can. Absolutely brilliant. Like, it was really overrated, the person uh, who I spoke to about it before I saw it. The only person I knew that had seen it before me. And they described it as a life-changing film. And even with that sort of pressure on it, it obviously didn't live up to standards. Because not many films are that life-changing. But uh, was not disappointed at all. Really great, really good film. Um, the sound, jump straight to that really. It's, uh, it's brilliant. It's not standard at all. It's not really treated like a film. There's no like Atmos in the back and dialogue in the centre and music out of the left and right. It's very avant-garde and it's treated a lot more like a piece of art with some of the lines not being audible at all and just this sort of really abstract view on um, panning and mixing and where the sounds are and where they should go. And I think that's really sort of key part of this film. Um, it's It's got several different aspect ratios in it and sizes, which may not come across on the home release, but in the cinema it really show, shows off because it, it goes from sort of small to big, widescreen to 4.3, and part of that and along with the sound and sort of its whole attitude is less as a film and more of a a sort of story that's been told in the way it should be not going by anything that's been before it it has obvious inspirations like 2001 and you know Alien and Blade Runner and loads of sort of heritage sci-fi films but it, it sort of carves its own path and I think that's a really key point of it about why it's an important film and about why people should see it. There's certain bits, especially like the the music, I think it's Hans Zimmer, which is really booming, really powerful and it goes along with the story of sort of making you feel really small, especially in some of the more transitional scenes where you can't really hear any of the dialogue because it's not necessary and it just makes you feel it's so it's just so big and it really sort of takes over the entire room and that's reflected in the mix because you can't hear anything else and it just does this really good sort of in sonic interpretation of the story in these moments is like you are tiny and you are insignificant that's how you feel in the theatre and that's how I'm sure a lot of people feel when the story is sort of gets to the end and it's again very non-traditional but it really sort of it's, it's just all together complete in its abstractness and the story and the way it's telling the story and the way it makes you feel and I think that's sort of what our job should be most of the time and we shouldn't get caught up in doing things because they're always done and doing things because either the director, director tells us to or the director told us not to and we think it should be done in other ways that everyone that has worked on this film has sort of picked out what it needs and done that regardless of anything else so it is very pure and for that it can probably get a little bit annoying I know a couple of people have said that about the pacing and sort of the non-traditional side of it but I think that is to me that's part of its charm um, a couple of bits there's uh, where they're driving through the cornfield and it's you know it's quite a simple scene they're just driving through a cornfield quite fast but you've got just the sound of the corn you can hear it sort of every individual what are they called ear ear of corn every ear of corn break and whiz past and there's sort of so much weight to it because if you are driving in a car and you hit even the tiniest thing it sounds like all hell is breaking loose when you're inside and it really sort of puts you in that position of them 
driving really quickly through it and you can just feel it hitting the side of the car and the wind and it's just like a real a real spot on sort of sound design following the visuals and I don't believe there's much music in that scene either and it's sort of it, it just feels so alive and like a lot of attention has been put into it and that's really nice um, the sci-fi sounds in the ships and the portals are really great they're not overly hyped like something like a Transformers film but they're not sort of as raw and old school as things like Alien and the noises of the Nostromo but they are they're sort of modern and done well but they're not over the top so that sort of makes them more believable and it doesn't take anything away from it when you're on the uh when they're on the water planet and it's just like knee deep water for the whole planet i think that's like the isolation that you feel with the sound of the water and then there's tidal waves and just that entire thing is exquisite like the way you can hear the wind and the loneliness and like this real feeling of empty and the the danger that's in it and it's not all not all the story and all the sound design is like that either there's the characters Tars and Case and their sounds are really because they are the, these robot characters and the sounds are really characterized sort of like 80s, 70s sci-fi for the most part and that's sort of the way the voices are characterised as well so it's sort of this mixture of comedy and real characterization and trying to bring them out from more of just like a HAL 9000 type character to more of like a, a Doctor Who dog and but then there's bits where the characters sort of are a little bit more important to the story and a little bit more important to everything else and they end up being a lot more powerful and they're very different to the spaceships and the people and in the way that their foley's done and the way that their movements come across because it isn't is it's fantastic and very impressive whoever thought of it the way that these characters move sometimes but it really sort of gives you this sort of rounded characters of being although they are just boxes but the way that they move and the way that they are quite funny and they have their own personalities and they have their own sonic identity in the Foley and in the mix is really sort of something that a lot of people outside of most animation should sort of aspire to because they always do it well in animation like Wally and Toy Story and all of those characters all have their own sort of individual thing but Tarzan Case are one of the two best done in any live action thing that isn't stupidly cheesy they're so well rounded and very funny and very serious at times and actual full on characters and really important to the story and the way that you feel about them and the other characters around them so that's sort of an overview it's a brief overview because it's a long film and it's a very in depth film and it is sort of Christopher Nolan distilled within sci-fi so there's a lot of options with it and he is great some people think he's too over the top and that he doesn't have people behind him who can say no and water him down a bit but for me I don't think he should and I don't think this film is evidence that that is a bad thing either um, normally I do a best part but because this is a really good film I'm going to say the worst part is the cameo and if you've seen the film you'll know what cameo I am talking about it is not on any of the posters not anywhere else and it's quite a shock when he turns up and you don't think anyone will turn up really but then you definitely don't expect it to be this actor and character um, and it wasn't really he was well played but he was too obvious I feel like it was written to the point where I knew what was going to happen and I was just waiting for it to happen and I don't know if that's specifically the writing or if that's more the way it was played but I just felt like that whole section really lacked the mystery um, but maybe we're talking about Christopher Nolan here that this could just be that literal and that obvious because it is like the inevitable 
the inevitable movement of humanity and that is always going to happen. So there is both sides to it, but it is a film and I do like to be guessing and I do like to not know what's coming up and that section really didn't do it for me. So there you go, Interstellar 2014. Go out there and watch it and more importantly, listen to it. Thanks a lot. Bye.